The single market comprises all the members of the European Union plus Iceland, Liechtenstein and Norway. There are over 500 million people in it. In monetary terms, it is the largest market in the world. The single market is a regulatory union. It works to ensure that all members have the same regulations and equivalent standards. Most goods and virtually all services are regulated to ensure their safety and quality. This means that goods and services do not need to be checked and tested when entering another member country, so trade can flow freely. For example, banks in one EU country can provide services in every other member country without any further regulation. A car part imported from Germany will meet UK safety standards because they are the same as those enforced by German regulations. The single market also has rules on things like the environment, health and employment. These aim to create a level playing field between producers in different European countries, so firms cannot reduce their costs by, say, lowering environmental standards. The single market also aims to ensure that EU firms and citizens can recruit from and work anywhere in the EU. This opens up opportunities and allows UK firms to recruit the necessary skills for key parts of the UK economy, such as universities, the city and the Premier League and in areas like meatpacking where Brits don't want to do the jobs. These workers allow firms to thrive and provide other jobs for UK nationals. Doesn't this undermine sovereignty? Well, actually, it pools sovereignty. Members agree to abide by common rules because they think that makes life better overall. How does the single market do all this? In brief, the European Commission, Parliament and Member States negotiate and agree the rules, often by majority voting and the Court of Justice enforces them. The last step is very important. EU governments and citizens are sure they are all playing by the same rules because they can appeal directly to the court if they suspect otherwise. Even if the UK accepts all the rules of the single market, once it leaves the EU, the UK and its citizens will no longer have a direct route of appeal and therefore enforcement will be weaker. This could deter trade and investment with the EU. Can't most of these advantages be negotiated separately? Well, the EU has taken 25 years to get to the current level of integration and no other group of countries has achieved half as much. Besides, the EU likes the single market and believes that if you want its advantages, you have to abide by its rules, all of them. The three countries that are members of the single market but outside the EU play virtually no role in setting the common rules, but even so, they think they are better off being in the single market. There is a trade-off between making your laws independently and cooperating sufficiently to be a part of a bigger market and achieve higher incomes.